it's that time again. It's a time for another Soul Warrior reading. I'd like to start doing these once a week. I really would. So I'm going to try to put that as an intention to do these Soul Warrior readings once a week because I think that we need, uh, we need it. We need it. The energies are a lot. And as light workers, star seeds, indigo children, however you identify, um, you know, there's, there's a lot. Um, I'm picking up like ascension symptoms. Uh, many people are experiencing ascension symptoms. What is that? Uh, headaches, nausea, fatigue, um, you know, anything that's not medically explained. So making sure you're taking care of your, you know, your health. Um, but yeah, ascension symptoms. I don't know why I can't say that today. Holy cow! Holy cow! All right, so we're gonna we're gonna just dive right in here and see what spirit wants to bring us for what it is uh, we're experiencing, what it is we're feeling, what it is we're needing is in support. then five came out and then an extra one so all right so we just got quite a bit here so I'm going to flip these over I haven't even looked at them as you can see and we're just gonna go with oh look at this gracious reset receptivity gracious receptivity <sighs> taking the time taking the time to get into the receiving mode to being open to receiving, being open to receiving. And you know, sometimes it can be really difficult to be open to receiving because sometimes what you're receiving, you don't completely understand. You don't understand the, the light codes that are coming in. You don't understand the downloads that you're receiving. You don't, rece you don't understand the dreams. Um, you know, sometimes the way in which we get information can be very, um, overwhelming on one hand and then on other times it feels very um obscure or um ethereal like you, you're not sure you're not sure so what i would say is uh just stay open stay open to what you're feeling seeing knowing hearing just stay open to being in the receptive mood to be open to receiving because what you're receiving is for you. What you're receiving is the support that you're needing for whatever ascension process you're going through, whatever step you're taking on that stairway to the ascension process. So being open, meditating on a regular basis, getting quiet, getting out in nature, practicing your clairs, you know, whatever you can do, and be open to possibility. You know, sometimes when we have new information coming to us, we can shut ourselves down if it feels too unfamiliar or too big. Um, and so one of the things that we have to kind of overcome as light workers is the who am I to receive this? You know, who am I to get this information? Um, you know, um, I'm not worthy. And we have to get out of that because of your divinity, because of your magnificence, you are worthy and this is for you. So whatever you're feeling, whatever you're seeing, whatever you're hearing, whatever you're knowing, right? Knowing that you know, but you don't know how you know, but you know, because that is your clairsentience. And getting into receiving that knowingness and trusting and acting on it can be one of the hardest parts of this journey. And so getting into meditation, practicing on a regular basis, practicing those clairs um, for clair audience. Get outside, listen to that furthest sound. For clairvoyance, uh, simply candle gazing, opening up your, your perception. And by candle gazing, you're, you're so focused on that, that flicker that, that other part of your awareness can come into play 
and you get used to that other part of your awareness that you can then tap into. Um, you know, there's the practicing, you know, um, visualizing that parking space. Um, getting into predicting who's going to call you when you hear the phone ring, who it is. You know, these are all ways that you can play with your clairs. These are all ways that you can really start to tap into spirit on a regular basis that's going to allow you to receive what it is they're bringing to you uh, the, the, in the dream state, in, in your uh, clairvoyance, in your claircognizance, your knowing, your knowingness, your feeling. Because we are coming into resonance. We're coming into resonance with each other. We're coming into resonance with all that is. We're coming into this harmony through harmonic flight with each other. So we're starting to really resonate with more people, more light workers. Um, more of us are coming together to be in support of each other. to really start to reach up into space and time, into the heavens, whatever you want to call it, feeling, seeing, knowing, hearing that higher self or those higher dimensional beings. You can call them your archangels. And some of you are experiencing dragons. Some of you are experiencing star mothers, other beings from other galaxies. It's all coming into, we're coming into resonance with each other. So as the information comes in, be willing and open to receiving however that looks for you so you want to make sure that you get grounded you want to make sure that you are balanced in your earth star chakra you are in connection to your earth star chakra because for many of you you're coming into initiation to a lot of what is up in the cosmos, what is in the other dimensions. And it's going to be really important for you to be able to ground very deeply into the earth so you don't feel carried away or disoriented or chaotic. You don't want to feel overwhelmed. So really getting in resonance and in connection to your earth star chakra. It's the chakra between the bottom of your feet and the earth. So if you think of yourself as that suspended being between the heavens and the earth. And if you are on the earth, your earth star chakra will be below your feet, but before the center of Mother Gaia. Grounding you, anchoring you connecting you to Mother Gaia so that you can feel supported and you can feel rooted so that when you go into harmonic flight, when you your spirit goes into, your, your higher self goes into the other dimensions, you are grounded and rooted in this one. And for some of you, this is making me think of Hora, the Egyptian goddess. For some of you, that's a symbol that you're starting to see. You're starting to open up to that ascended master. You're starting to feel connected. I'm just going to read a little bit about it. 
And for some of you, you're starting to see It's a really bad drawing, but I'm going to show it to you. You're starting to see the Aya for us. The Aya for us has been adopted the world over as a symbol of protection and guidance. Many people have tattoos, necklaces, and even stickers to it, even if they're not connected to the ancient Egyptian mysteries. Horus himself is a highly protective and guiding force. And by working with, meditating on, or even just carrying his eye symbol, we are invoking his cosmic protection. So it's another way to bring in this very protected, grounded energy as you start to feel, see, and know the other dimensions. Because working with Horus brings you remembering your starry origins, opening your psychic vision, mother and child relationships, connecting to the stellar gateway chakras and the stars. So that is out of Divine Masters and Ancient Wisdom by Kyle Gray. So thank you, Kyle. I love your book. A little shout out there. All right, because we are coming into life force energy. You're starting to feel it. You're starting to know it. You're starting to work with it. You're starting to feel the life force energy that creates our energetic system, not only around ourselves, our physical bodies, but also the animals, the plants, Mother Gaia. It's how we are all interconnected, how we can all relate to each other on that energetic plane. And so it's important to know that that energetic plane takes you into this harmonic flight, into the higher dimensions, into the more that is. And by being grounded in your earth star chakra, you're able to feel connected and grounded so you don't feel overwhelmed or disconnected or chaotic as you start to go higher and higher and tap into this life force energy where you're able to read the field. You're able to read the field of the people around you, the energies around you, the vibe, whatever you want to call it, because you're starting to receive it all the time, all the time. So for many of you, you're being connected in maybe for the first time or maybe anchored more deeply into your pineal perspective through your third eye chakra. So again, candle gazing will help you to unblock your third eye chakra or help you to strengthen it. If you're someone that feels like your clairvoyance isn't as clear as you would like it to be or you're not sure about it. And the bonus card was Earth. Nurture nature. Nurture nature. Because the Earth is our home. And the Earth gives us our life. Life force energy. As we are all interconnected. So the energies are revealing to you. How... To start perceiving them, understanding them, knowing them, and using them. So for some of you, it might be something you've been tapping into for a long time. For some of you, you may just be tapping into it, starting to tap into this energetic field around us that connects all of us and everything. For some of you, you're just learning about it. Welcome. Once you can start tapping into it, you can start using it to your advantage. You can start understanding where you need to be and where you don't need to be. Who you want to be around, who you don't want to be around. What situation is good for you, what situation is not good for you. And that's why it's so important for you to be grounded as all that information is coming to you. 
flooding at you. Yeah, because we are receiving a lot of light codes. Toth light codes, light initiation, great teacher awakening, divine magic. So there it is, guys. We're feeling it. We're being brought to it. The great teacher awakening. So for many of you, you're getting these light initiations you don't know what to do with. That's why it's so important for you to get into this receptivity mode so that even though you're not sure what to do with them, you're still allowing the receiving of these light codes that are bringing you into this divine magic or into the divine matrix of this energetic field that you're starting to feel, see, hear, and know. To help you navigate your life experience to help you navigate your life experience in a positive way so that you can embrace and embody this higher consciousness, this higher level of energy, energetic codes that are coming into this earth plane in this dimension for all of us to start experiencing as the earth shifts out of the 3D through the 4th D and into the 5th dimension. The shift of consciousness waking us up these light codes have been coming in and they are the great teacher they are giving us the knowledge through our DNA waking us up to what is inside of us the magic within us to help us feel see hear and know our life experience in a way that you can't do as only a 3D human vessel. It's time to tap into the spirit within. The spirit, the energetic form, the more that we are. to release the fear and embrace the love. Get into the higher vibrational frequencies of love and get out of the 3D fear. The fear that we're not going to survive, the fear that we're not safe. The fear that holds us back from truly embracing all that we are, all that we experience. Tangible and non-tangible. And for many, the non-tangible is the most frightening. Because you have to trust. You have to trust. You have to have faith. You have to have surrender to a power higher than yourself. And that's what we're being asked to do. That's what we're being asked to do. We're being asked to... We're being asked to receive. Receive the help. Receive the more. Graciously. Open arms. In gratitude. All of the information that is helping us to ascend. Trusting that what we're receiving is for us. and then allowing ourselves to act on what we're receiving.
I was just brought to use this deck. I didn't know I'd be using this deck actually in this reading. Um, not a deck I normally use in these Soul Warrior readings. Ah, because this is what they need us to know. We are seeing beyond our senses. We are seeing beyond the tangible. We are tapping into our clairvoyance, to our third eye. We're tapping into the energetic field that is bringing us into the more. Um, the, the higher vibrational frequencies that allow us in our human form to manifest and co-create our reality. And we can't do that if we stay in our very human five senses. We have to go beyond. We have to see beyond. We have to open ourselves up. It can be daunting. It can be scary. Whew. Seeing beyond, key concepts, vision, the capacity to imagine something, to look beyond the material, beyond the obvious. The realm of the transpersonal. Options and possibilities. Getting out of your own way and discarding your projected outcomes. Do you consider things within the framework of what you already know? Or can you allow yourself to see beyond into the vastness of potential? We are all gifted with the magical ability of imagination. And when we open to it, we become a conduit for a divine vision greater than our own. Conduit for the energy. There are two ways to view the world and co-create with it. One is form a face value perspective. What you see is what you get. The second is allowing your imagination to see beyond what something is right now and move into a place that doesn't yet exist in the material world. Manifestation. Allowing your thoughts and your feelings to come together. In this cosmic playground of possibilities, you see into a future where anything you imagine has the potential to become real. If you use your imagination faithfully and consciously, avoiding the traps of fearful projection and drama, you can connect to any reality you truly want to experience. When you open yourself even further, you're often gifted with a divine vision. As a practice, you can reimagine that vision over and over to strengthen it. As you channel these visions through you, you become a superconductor for the world, tapping into the divine matrix, the energetic system that is all around us. Today, know that your vision, what you imagined forming in the invisible, will be delivered into the material world. Don't worry about the timing of things that is in the hands of the universe. Surrender to the process, the how and the when. Your job is to continue to imagine. Take a few steps forward, then imagine some more. The universe's job is to make it real. What a fabulous partnership. You have to feel it. You have to imagine it and feel it. You have to manifest. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to strive and drive. We're here to manifest. And when you're in the receiving mode, from your angels, guides, ascended masters, star mothers, star beings. You're in the receptive mode. You're manifesting, you're co-creating your reality with that part of yourself that is too big to be in your human body, your soul or higher self. Okay. Let's get an eighth dimensional being into our message. So we're gonna get a dragon oracle card. Ooh. 
white gold dragon from Lyra, connects you to the highest Christ light. Develop your causal chakra. Bathe in ninth dimensional Christ light. I love it. It's even higher than the eighth, eighth dimension. It's, we're in the ninth dimension. I love it. Look at be that beautiful golden dragon from Lyra. Let's see, white golden dragon. Develop your causal chakra. Lyra is the cross-shaped 12th dimensional stargate through the, which Archangel Christiel and the unicorns enter our universe. The light from Lyra pours down through the moon, allowing scintillating seventh dimensional dragons to step through into the vibration of Earth. These white gold dragons embody the highest frequency of the Christ light available to everyone on this planet. They work closely with Archangel Christiel, who is in charge of the development of the causal chakras of humanity. This is particularly important now as our causal chakra is our connection to the higher dimensions of spirit, the dragons, angels, unicorns, and masters. The white gold dragons from Lyra help to clear and develop our causal chakra and illuminate our highest possible ascension path. These white gold dragons are attracted to you now because you are already carry Christ light in your aura. Ask one to take you to the ninth dimensional pool of Christ light held in Lakume. Visualize yourself bathing in the pool, which simmers and swirls with pure love and light. Feel yourself absorbing all you are ready to receive. When you return, continue to feel the white gold light in your aura and pr practice pure, unconditional love in your daily life. Your aura will radiate the incredibly high frequency of white gold, and the white gold dragon from Lyra will support you by continuing to pour Christ light into you. Take time to find a quiet, still place where you can listen to its wisdom and guidance. Oh, I love that. I love that. Crystalline white light. I love it. We are never alone. We are surrounded by all the support. We just have to get into the receiving mode of how to tap into it. Get quiet. Meditate. That's how you tap in getting on Mother Gaia, getting in connection, rooting through your Earth Star Chakra. Feel the connection. Until next time. <laughs>